In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's great to be with you again today, and I mean it when I say that. I, I probably, Sam feels this way too, but when I preach to you, I feel like we're together. It's, I look forward to the time together, so I'm glad to be with you again today. And behind me, you may see a gallery that is appearing, and these are pastels and drawings that Penny made, so I'm really glad to share those with you today. What I want to talk about today is the power of our perspective, the power of our point of view. And it will change the way we see our lives. It will change the way we see each other. It will affect the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat each other. It's huge. So I, I want to talk about that today. And, and the first time that, I, that it kind of came to home to me that this is important and that everybody doesn't see life the way I do always. I was watching a very short film. It was from Japan. I was in my 20s, and it was about a murder investigation. And the murder had happened at twilight, so not in broad daylight where everything is very clear, but rather in that in-between state where you might see it differently. 13 witnesses. And so the film included the story as each of those 13 people told it, told the incident. And it was vastly different according to the point of view of each person. Our perspective, our point of view affects the way we judge our lives, the way we take in reality. It is that powerful. And so the lessons are getting at that. And I, I want to talk about perspective, but to begin with, I want to talk about what Paul is saying because it it has it has caused me to really wonder before um, who is this God that we're talking about. Paul says, "Be a slave to righteousness, and then you'll have eternal life, or be a slave to sin, and that will lead to death." And the way I used to hear that was, okay. If I'm good, if I'm righteous, if I'm you know, a servant, a slave of righteousness, then God will give me eternal life and otherwise God will not. And I just don't see God that way. God saying, well, if you're you know, in my camp, I'll give you eternal life. And if you're not, too bad for you. I don't see God that way. So I had trouble understanding what Paul was getting at until a friend told me what was happening in his life and it became so clear to me. So I wanna share that with you. Now, this friend's name is Hank. He and I went to seminary together 40 years ago. His wife and I have the same birthday, so we would always have fun with that. And a group of us, you know, a few people would get together and go to their apartment. They were married, so they had an apartment that was huge to us. And we'd have a glass of the cheapest wine ever, I'm sure, and talk about theology because that glass was just blowing our minds. So we'd sit around and, you know, just visit. And I don't think anyone noticed that Hank drank more than anybody else. But eventually we all graduated and we began serving in our different churches. And Hank and I would meet sometimes near the seminary in, in New York City, and we would have lunch together and catch up. One day at lunch, he made an announcement that really just surprised me. He said, I'm an alcoholic. I didn't see it coming. I did not know that. And he said, it's true. He said, AA's is saving my life. He said, there was a time when I organized my life around drinking. I would organize my day around where was the next drink? Where would I buy that bottle of wine to take home? And he said, I was truly killing myself. It was that bad. He said, now I organize my life around when and where is the next AA meeting that I will go to. It's saving my life. And that's how I organize my life. And that 
is a clear example of choosing life over death, isn't it? We get it when it's physical life and physical death. But of course, Paul is talking about broader life, the kingdom of God life. And I'll get to that too. So, but I want to go by way of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah is talking about how you will hear prophets of doom and gloom, and you will hear prophets of peace. And when peace comes, you will know that those were prophets of God. Now, the word he uses for prophet means messenger. And it got attached to either a messenger of God in spirit form, an angel, those messengers, or a messenger of God in human form, which is called a prophet. But when Jeremiah was talking, he was saying, you'll hear messengers, messages of doom and gloom, and messages of peace. And when peace comes, you will understand that was of God. And I want to think with you a bit about these messages of doom and gloom, because I think all of us sometimes get discouraged and just put that out there and and believe it. I remember coronavirus, of course, it has been a huge stress for everybody. And when New York City was in the height of hours, someone posted, I looked out my window and there are these New Yorkers and they're not wearing masks. They're just so selfish. I just give up on New Yorkers. All they do is thinking about themselves. And I think that we all get discouraged sometimes and we do blame people and give up on them. That's a message of doom and gloom. There's another way to see ourselves. And that's the message of peace and that's the kingdom of God perspective. And so I wanna tell you a story about that. It's true and it is so beautiful and it is kingdom of God in a way that we can kind of get it. This story was sent to me by Sam, so thanks Sam. And it happened before the coronavirus, back when we had races and we could do these things. So there was an international race. And for an international race, of course, you have people from different countries and they're not going to all understand each other. And that's an important detail for this story. So there was an international race and the man from Kenya, no, from Nigeria was clearly about to win. He was front runner but he didn't understand the sign he, he thought the sign that he was that it was near the end and the sign said like you know a few hundred meters to the final finish line but he thought it said finish line and so he was stopping thought the race was over he had won well the man in second place was from spain and he he knew he saw what was going on he understood it he said oh keep running go fast go fast of course, he said it in Spanish, adelante, adelante. And the man from Nigeria did not happen to speak Spanish, had no idea why this man was yelling at him. So the man from Spain, realizing this, got behind the man from Nigeria and he pushed him to the finish line so he would win. And afterwards, a reporter said, well, why did you do that? And he said, because he was winning, of course. I mean, he was clearly winning. And the reporter said, yes, but you could have won. And the man said, well, I've always wondered what would it be like if we lived that way, that we're all in this together? What would life be like? Kingdom of God, by the way, that's the kingdom of God life. And then he went on, he said, I wondered what it would be like. And he said, also, what would my mother say if I won that way? So that's a plug for all the moms who encourage us to see that there is a whole lot more to life than competing against other people and winning at their expense. A lot more to life than that. And that's God's perspective. And that's kingdom of God life. And when we buy into God's perspective, and I would say that I am probably in kindergarten in that way, but I'm beginning to see it and, and doing my best to live into it. When we see our lives from that perspective, we're all in this together. It's not about coming in first place. It's not about proving myself. When we see ourselves that way, we quit judging ourselves. 
by did I pull it off? Did I do it? Was I good enough? We quit judging other people. We quit living in terms of competitiveness, but rather we live in that Ubuntu way that we're all in this together. That's kingdom of God living. And it's a different way of living, a different way of seeing each other. And that man from Spain, he knew what it's all about. Now, when we see each other this way, when we see from God's perspective, it's going to impact our ministry. And that's what Jesus is talking about in the gospel lesson. He says, Whenever whoever welcomes a prophet in my name welcomes me. Whoever gives a prophet in my name a glass of water is doing it to me. Now, when I hear that, I again, I want to use the word messenger. Whenever we see a messenger of God, that's Jesus. Everyone we in front of us is a messenger of God, and we're to receive that message. And whether that cup needs to be filled with water, or if it's a cup that someone has that they're hoping you'll put a coin in, that's a messenger of God. And we treat people differently when we see people that way. The word for messenger in German, it's good to know, means desired guest. When the person in front of me is a desired guest of God, don't I treat them differently than if, oh, you're just some poor person who needs a coin in your cup, you know? We, we do it differently. It will, it will shift our ministry to a much more powerful one. It will shift our lives when we see ourselves differently. It will shift us to receiving love better, to putting love in the world better. And that's what the kingdom of God is calling us to. And that's the perspective, these lessons are inviting us to live our lives in terms of. Amen.